Praise the Lord. Don't forget Brother Jim's money here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is good this yeah. morning. This morning, every morning. I'm going to preach what the Lord told me to preach this morning. That's from Matthew 24. Um, just the beginning of Matthew 24, about a few verses. And the thing of it is, in the commentary down here, uh, it talks about what this is all about. And it says that this is not the description of the converted world. And this is talking about at the coming of Christ. That, that's what my commentary says. And uh, I agree with it because in Matthew 24 it says, as it was in the days of Noah. That, that means there's not going to be very many believers when Christ comes back. The thing that I want to preach on this morning is in the fourth verse. Jesus answered and said, Take heed that no man deceive you. We're living in a time uh, Sister Jackie talking about pagans. One time, I mean, this was jumping back a ways. They was in St. Louis at the Ramla Outreach Center. This has been, I, I'd say 30 years ago, probably. We, we went several nights while we was there. Papa Kenneth Hagen was the minister there. But the power of God was in that place. Seated about 5,000, something like that. And Jerry and Gerald walked out with the woman that played Ellie in the Beverly Hillbillies. She was there that night. And they recognized her as we were walking out. And they, they called her name. And she said, shh, didn't want anybody to know who she was. And she called them over to her. They walked out with her. But people got healed there that night. I mean, they was falling out in the spirit. And uh, he was pretty old at that time. He wasn't as old as I am now. But he was he was getting to be, he was probably 75, something like that, 70 or 75 that time but he prayed for people until he was literally exhausted and that just I mean as long as he had any power he was praying for people that's the trouble in our day and time we don't want to get uncomfortable we don't want to exhaust ourselves anymore. We want to do what feels good to our body and we're not concerned like the people was when God was pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. He still is, but very few people will allow him to use them like he wants to use them. <clears throat> pray for my throat because I'm <clears throat> I'm uh, really affected by the stuff that's flying around out there and I mean you can take that spiritually too if you want to uh -huh. we're all affected by things that are flying around in this world and uh, we're living in the last days I believe I believe with all my heart that things are starting to shape up and it's going to happen real quick that time's going to come and Jesus is going to come back. Yeah. I'm talking about the tribulation period 
uh, before the wrath of God takes place in the tribulation, before the wrath of God, Jesus is going to come back after the church because we're not appointed unto wrath. The Bible tells us we're not appointed unto wrath. I want to read, before I get over here into this, I want to read from the 37th verse, probably, uh, well, uh, I'll read through 39. And this is the way the world is today. I mean, he's talking to Jerusalem here, but if he was talking to the world, he'd say the same thing. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings, and ye would not, would not pay any heed to what was going on. So many of us want to do things our way. That's true. And he said, don't lean to your own understanding. He said, your ways are not my ways, and my ways are not your ways. Your thoughts are not my thoughts, and my thoughts are not your thoughts. We need to be constantly and continuously of seeking out the ways of God. Yeah. We need to be in prayer, seeking Him, and wanting to know what's going on in this world today, wanting to know the truth about yeah. what is happening, not just what we hear that's happening. We can know the truth because Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Yes. And that, that's where we need to be out at. It says, Behold, your house is left desolate, and left unto you desolate. But we can cause our house to be left unto us that way. Are we, like Sister Jackie was talking about, the things, the way Kenneth Hagin knows if his congregation are Christians or not by going to their house and seeing what goes on there. Yeah. And, and God knows exactly what is going on in your house. Yeah. He knows what's going on in the house of God. And they talking about Rain, Rain's Creek Church. And that, that he knows what's going on here. But we have to worship him in spirit and in truth. Yeah. And that, that's the only way that it can be done. <clears throat> For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. I'm beginning to realize that now more and more all the time that it's going to be a blessed day when Jesus Christ returns yes. from glory where he's at right now with so many of the old patriots that done going on. They're going to come back and they're going to be reunited with their body, which is going to be glorified as it comes up out of the grave. The body and the spirit and the soul is going to be reunited, and there's going to be a great, that's going to be a great day, Brother Bob. Oh, what a day that's going to be. When the Jesus opens up his arms and he accepts his bride. That's what it's going to be. The bride of Christ. Uh, he's going to put his arms around every one of us. And he's going to pull us in to him. Yeah. And, and there we're going to be forevermore. Yeah. 
<coughs> it says in the fifth verse it says for many shall come in my name saying I am Christ and shall deceive many and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars see that ye be not troubled for these for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet I, when I read this, I think about false prophets. Uh, that's what it talks about here. Uh, there's going to be false prophets that are going to be all over the world yeah. in the churches, mainly in the churches. There's going to be false prophets. There is false prophets. Not there's going to be. There is in this day and have been for a long time now. But ever since the days of Christ, there have been false prophets. But in this day that we're living in today, that is the intentions of the enemy and all these demons that it was talking about in our Sunday school lesson this morning are messengers of the devil that is sent to cause problems in the world. Yes. I mean, Jesus said, take heed that no man deceive you. Us have a spiritual mind today that we cannot be deceived. I mean, we're standing on what does the Bible call Jesus? We're standing on the rock. Yes. The rock of our salvation. Yes. The Bible says he is a solid rock that we can stand on and not be deceived. That he is the rock that uh, the, the builders refused. That, I mean, I, I'm talking about Israel right now. They didn't recognize Jesus as being the chief cornerstone in the building of the temple of God, spiritually speaking. They refused him and didn't know who he was. Yes. Do you know that we're living in the Gentile age in this day and time? And this, uh, a lot of Matthew 24 is talking about Gentiles. And the Gentiles are doing the very same thing that the Jews done. And they're not, they don't even understand who Jesus is. Uh, I mean, I'm talking about Christian people that was once in church that was praying and, and that they was uh, standing up and they would testify and they would cry and they would talk about who God is. And in this day and time, uh, they're no longer in church. And some of them have had things to happen to them uh, in the last 10 years that I believe that God just removed his hand. And th this happened to them uh, because that they turned their back on God. God did not turn their back on them. But they turned their back on God. And I'm not going to bring out anything that I know this morning. But I know people that are, they've had bad things happen to them. If, if you turn your back on God, you deny him, and uh, you become part of the world, and you start doing as the world does, then what more can you expect? And this says, Take heed that no man deceive you. Amen. You know the worst thing that can happen to a person is if they if they allow themselves to be deceived. Amen. That once that you allow yourself to be deceived, you don't you don't know who God is anymore. You don't know that He's Lord of Lord and King of Kings, Amen. and that He is the ruler 
of your wife. That's exactly who that he's supposed to be. If you're a Christian, God is supposed to be the ruler of your life. Amen. And we don't have to worry about the laws of Moses. Why? Because we're not going to break the laws of Moses uh, to start with. It don't, the Bible don't say that it's not wrong in this dispensation. Uh, it don't say that it's not wrong. The laws of Moses are still just as wrong as they ever was. And if we break the laws, we're going to stand and we're going to be judged for what they uh, they say that thou shall not do. Yes. It says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Oh. It says, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not uh, commit adultery. Uh, everything that is in the Ten Commandments is still in force today. Uh, the way that we've been set free from the curse of sin and death is because the Lord Jesus Christ gave us power yes. to become victorious. Uh, and we are victorious over the curse of sin and death this yes. morning. Amen. If we don't allow ourselves to be deceived, it says, uh, for nation shall rise against nation. That's exactly the way that it's been all of my life. Uh, it's been nation against nation. And it's getting worse and worse. The small nations are rising up with great power. That where that power come from? Except through deceiving yes. people. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. We was talking about this uh, <coughs> coronavirus that is still on red page around the world. I believe, I believe stronger every day that it was a man-made yes. thing that took place. Yeah. I believe that it was uh, intended to separate the powers of God, yeah. to destroy the powers of God. I believe that uh, all the great powers of the earth, I'm talking about kings or whatever it might be, are against Christ, uh, Christianity yes. in this time that we're living in. Why? Because we're living in the last days. I believe that the United States is right in on the rest of the nations. I, I believe because that we're a Gentile nation. I mean, we've got Jewish people living here and we're the ones of us that are transformed from what we was born into and that sin, the ones that was transformed, we are Jews. We're Christian Jews because we've got the blood of Jesus flowing through our veins. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Jesus is our, I mean, he is the one that has come and bought and paid a price for us. He bought and paid for us on the cross of Calvary. He, he paid a price that no other Amen. one could, uh, uh, they couldn't pay what he paid. He done a work that no one else could do. I couldn't be saved if it wasn't for the blood of Jesus that he shed on the cross of Calvary. And that he he uh, done it because the Father, uh, the Father, uh, it was His will that Jesus come to this earth and die. 
because it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. All the world needs to know it, they need to hear it, but they're not going to because this says uh, down here, this is not the description of a converted world. And, and it's talking about wars and rumors of war, and diseases and pestilence and all the things that are in the world in this day and time. This is not a description of what some people say that it's going to be in the end time, that there's going to be uh, uh, one of the uh, greatest revivals that ever took place yeah. in the world. It, I don't believe it's going to be that way uh, because that uh, 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 because the Bible says that there's going to come a great falling away first before the return of Christ. Uh, and if you can't see that uh, the return it is near, there's something wrong. And if you don't recognize this great falling away, I mean, there is great churches that uh, are having a great blessing by God as far as the number that are coming in. And I believe that there is some of these churches that are churches that are really ordained of God. I believe that God is really in these places and there's multitudes and multitudes of uh, uh, people that's coming in and they're receiving Christ as uh, their Savior. Yeah. And not only that, they're being healed in the uh, works of God like it was in the book of Acts is taking place. Uh, but there's so many churches that are sitting back and they're uh, actually binding the Holy Spirit of God uh, to where that he can't work the way he would if we would get uh, 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 freed up and released in him to where we wasn't afraid to speak the works of God and to see it be done. We still serve that same God today that created this world. I mean, he's the creator of this world, uh, but how hard would it be for us to uh, uh, walk uh, uh, upon two people like was in Sunday school this morning that was uh, uh, full of demons and for us to know that we could command the demons to come out of them and that uh, uh, if they requested to go into a herd of swine that we could tell them to go and they would go. Do you know that's the way that it's supposed to be today? The Bible don't say there's going to come any slackness in the way that God works. It, it don't say that. It says there's going to come a great falling away from the truth, the true word of God. That's where the falling away yeah. is at this morning. That's true. Amen. Oh, and uh, I mean it needs to be preached around the world. And not just uh, here in this church. Every church in our community needs to get the Bible. And I don't care what church it is, and I won't start calling churches names this morning. Uh, but I feel like I could. And maybe I should, but I won't because uh, there might be someone that uh, would want me to give them an answer to why I called their name. But let me tell you something. I'll say this. You need to get your Bible, and you need to study it, yes. and you need to see what it says, yes. how that we need to be on our knees in this day and time of looking to and believing that uh, the second return of Christ uh, is right at hand. Amen. Oh, I, I'm thankful this morning that Dakota is going to go and be baptized uh, today. How I would like to see the rest of my
grandchildren and great grandchildren and step grandchildren and all of them I'd see, like to see them lined up down there at the river to get baptized and every one of your children and grandchildren that uh, are not uh, uh, living for God like uh, they should be today uh, we should be able to have one of the greatest revivals that there ever was to hit Wayne County and because I've got enough in my own family all of my children the, uh, the ones that are uh, uh, putting God off this morning that are at the home and bed or whatever it might be if they would take one step God would take two uh, I'm not Amen. saying they're not sick but I'm saying this there is a greater God than the God of coronavirus uh, or of any other disease uh, in the world today. Amen. And Amen. if there wasn't, we wouldn't have a chance to be saved. And why can't we uh, get our minds uh, cleared and our heart right with God and know and realize that uh, there is a God, uh, that a God that said uh, that uh, I will not change. Uh, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he said that, if he means that, then things in, in our life should be like they was from the beginning. Yeah. We should be stronger Christians today than we've ever been before. Uh, you know why? We're climbing a ladder this morning, Brother Don. And we're climbing a ladder. And I'm talking about a ladder of righteousness, a ladder of wisdom, a ladder of knowledge, a ladder of acquaintance that uh, gets us acquainted with God more every day than what we've been the day before. Amen. Oh, that I remember the days back when Margaret was alive. I, I remember the real things about it. It wasn't all sugar and spice and everything nice. And a lot of it was arguing, fussing, disagreeing, I mean, about things now that I wonder why it was of any importance at all. How much better the marriage we could have had if we would have been in agreement. Wow. But we wasn't. I mean, about anything except the Lord. We wow. agreed in that all the time. But whatever the enemy can put in your life to cause you to have a distraction there, that's what he wants to do. He wants to distract you, even through some things like dreams. Last night I dreamed that uh, uh, that me and Mark, we was heading for church. It was a country church with an entrance like this back here on that had doors to the outside and the doors before you come into the chapel part. Well, I, I was, I had been fighting something in my sleep, in my dream, cancer or something like that. I had, uh, I, I dreamt that I had cultured it and I had proof in the jar that I was bringing to church. It was like something, I, I don't know what it was, but I knew back then. I know what it was, but I can't say what it was. Anyway, I had the proof. You know I got there, and I had on shorts, which I don't believe in wearing. I don't even wear them at home. I, and I walked in, and I looked, and I was barefooted. And Margaret said, you're not fitting to go in there. And I jumped to the side just as quick as I could to keep anyone from seeing me. And uh, 
as quick as I could, I went back out the door. God was telling me, be fit. Yeah. Don't let the devil sneak up on you. Yeah. I come in the church, come all the way, thinking I was going to give this testimony of what God had done for me. Jesus spoke to me and he said, I want you to preach from Matthew 24. Take heed that no man deceive you. That is the message that needs to be preached to this world today, to the, the church world. Take heed that no man deceive you. Because so many, and the reason I brought up Kenneth Hagin, Kenneth Sr., was because that was one of the things he was preaching. Take heed that no man deceive you. And I mean, if the glory of God could have been in that place like it was back then, it can still be the same way today. That was back when I, I've been preaching about two years. I believe it was 1985 when he was there. That year, I believe it was 1985. And the glory of God was in that place. He was an elderly man that was bent over from the hard work he had done in the church. I mean, I, I believe that that man suffered for the cause of Christ. Yeah. I believe that he, his intention was that his body was not important, that he would go beyond what his body could endure to do the will of God. Oh, how I'd like to be like that. I had another dream this last week that God gave me. And it was about a large brush harbor that would hold probably 200 people and that'd be a large brush harbor. But Something like the COVID virus, COVID virus had people separated. They was in groups of five or six people, separated five or six foot all over the place. There was three sections, three preachers, center section, left and the right. I was one on the left, preaching to the left. Someone was preaching to the center. Someone was preaching to the right. I mean, it was big enough that this preacher didn't bother me. I didn't bother him or the other way, the other one either. Mm -hmm. And God, is, he's wanting to do something. But the ones I was preaching to and the ones scattered all over was old time people. Yeah. Ones that had done died and went on. God told me, he said, I want you to go down and preach to each separate group on your section. He spoke to me. I went down, the ones on the front seat was Bethel, William, Harold, Greg, and Marcus. Back when the boys was just boys, eight. Harold was nine or ten years old. Mom and Dad, a bunch of others, my brothers that done dead and gone on, they were scattered through there. To me, that showed me the great falling away that fell away with the generation that had passed that there's a great fall away yeah. that went with them. How I would like to preach to all the ones, but they're dead and gone, and I can't preach to them now. But I'd love to preach in a brush heart before it would take three ministers to preach for each one to be able to hear what yeah. they're saying. 
God is not through. Are we finished? Are we going to give up and let let just leave God out of all of it? That's what the enemy is wanting us to do. Yes. Give up and say, there's no use. They're not going to listen to you anymore. I know how it feels because I've walked a lonesome life since I've been preaching because I've not had any support from my family whatsoever. I've walked a lonesome life. I still do. I walk a very lonesome life. It's so good when I dream that Martin's with me because that's the way it used to be. Yeah. But it will never be that way again. We had our life and now my life is with God. I'm bound and determined I'm going to do what God wants me to do. Yes. I don't care if I have to preach to one person. I'm going to preach to that one person. Amen. I'm going to close because I feel like I've preached what God wanted me to preach. And it, it wasn't too much. I mean, I didn't even get started on what Matthew 24 is about. But there's wisdom in Matthew 24. Yeah, there is. As it was in the days of Noah. We need to consider that. See how it was. Noah's grandfather didn't believe him. Methuselah. He did not believe him. He died in the flood. I, I believe I know he died yeah. in the year of the flood. He did. He did not believe him. He was 869 or 969 years old. And he did not did not believe what Noah was preaching. His yeah. grandson. I can relate to that. Oh, what a sad day it's going to be when Jesus splits the eastern sky. Yes. Yeah. Or when our loved ones lay down, they had to cut their last breath and they lay down. Yeah. The Bible says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God of the parents. I will close there. We're going to have baptizing it too over to Black Bridge and oh how I hope to God it'll be like a resurrection in that God will resurrect I mean that's the you you die out to the world and you come up a brand new creation. Creation of Christ. Praise the Lord. I just wanted to clarify, you're talking about St. Francis River now. Yeah. Okay. Call it, we call it Black Bridge. Yeah. It used to be people by the name Black lived over there. And that call it Black Bridge. But St. Francis River, Black Bridge. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> Praise the Lord. No Anyone got anything on your heart before we close? Oh, yeah. I just want you to know that I love you. Yeah. I appreciate that, Dakota. I love you, too. And I'm looking forward to baptizing you today. Praise the Lord. I stand and we'll be dismissed.